purpose in our life to be redeemed. The redemption means we're going to go to Al Sinai, we're going to build the Mishkan. And as well says, Chas Shalom, to think that Akadosh Baruch Hu writes a history in the Torah. The Torah is too holy to write history. Because the Zohar, of course, <coughs> the purpose of the Torah is a message and direction and a guide and a hint what does the Torah expect from us. And here the Torah comes and tells us a story about Moshe Rabbeinu. The whole parasha is about Moshe and nothing is good about Moshe. And we saw at the end of the parasha that Moshe Rabbeinu came to Paro and asked him that we want to go out of Egypt, excuse me. And Paro said, well, you are lazy people, not only that you have to continue to do the bricks that we used to do, I'm not going to give you the supplier, the supplies for the bricks. And they had to go and try to get straw to make the bricks, they couldn't find it. Try to get it from people, people went after them, hit them. And Moshe came out of the palace, and two people st standing up while he came out and screamed at Moshe Rabbeinu, Why did you come here? Who wanted you here? Since you came, you told us we're coming out, things got worse. So he said, right, Moshe went to Hashem, whatever it means. And told him, I told you I don't want to go. Why did you send me? Since I came, things got worse. I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. And the Parsha ends, the Hashem tells him, Listen, Moshe, because you complain, you will not go to El Israel. You weren't finished. Moshe mission finished before it started. Not only that the Gemara says, next is Parasha by Era. Says the Gemara that when Moshe spoke to Akadosh Baruch the way he spoke to him, an angel from Shammai wanted to kill him. Midat Adin. Maybe Gabriel. And since the Gemara says Moshe was not talking for his sake, he was talking for the sake of Am Israel, then Hashem let him live. He almost dead. Almost died. Almost died. And the question is, it's Moshe Rabbeinu. How do you speak to Akadosh Baruch this way? <coughs> so bad that you get such a punishment on the spot, finished. Before you know, you're not going to take them to Eretz Israel. And the tragedy is not just for Moshe, it's for us. Since Moshe did not go to Eretz Israel, he did not, did not build with Hamikdash. And if he would have built with Hamikdash, the Gemara said, the Mishnah would have been destroyed. And Moshe would have brought the Mashiach, he is the Mashiach. The whole thing finished. If we go in the beginning of the parasha, one by one, we see a disaster after disaster. And I think wrote it in the Torah. And it's really not necessary. We don't have to know anything right now. For the future tense, Moshe will not go to Israel because the Torah will emphasize that one day Hashem told him, go speak to the rock, and you hit the rock. But that information over here now, the dialogue between Moshe and Akadosh Baruch Hu, it's really not necessary. So the Torah introduces us Moshe and Moshe Rabbeinu is very, very merciful. Very merciful. He is going down from the palace. The question is if he was 12 or 20. And he helps the Jewish people, pretends as a manager to help them. They should be able, so-called, to fulfill the amount of bricks 
what they have to make every day. He sees them, they're bleeding, they carry on the shoulders cement and bricks. <coughs> and he goes to the Gemara, says he goes and he helps them, he talks to them, he pets them. He was a prince after Bitya, not Batya. Her name was Bitya. She pulled them out of the Nile. The men grew in the palace partially. The best ever. The best. But what tells you the first day he goes outside to help his, 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 his people and he sees uh, an Egyptian official hits a Jew. So Moshe Rabbeinu knows certain things. Some Kabbalah. He, he says or he has in mind if, if one of the names of Hashem. An Egyptian person died and Moshe buried him. And by the way, you should know people don't know, 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 know those names today. I think I've had a two hundred years ago. Somebody opened the store on Shabbat. And people came to Khatam Safa told them somebody opened the door on Shabbat. So Khatam Safa sent his son over there. I told the guy, listen, it's Shabbat. If you send a Jew, you don't open the store over here. And the man said, the next time you come here, I'm going to teach you a lesson. So his son came home and told Khatam Safa. The man said he's going to do something to me. Khatam Safa said, you know what? I'll tell you what to say. When he comes towards you, you say what Moshe Rabbeinu said in, in Egypt. And uh, you see what's going to happen. So the next Shabbat, so the son went over there. The guy came running towards him. I don't know if he wanted to kill him or wanted to push him. And the son, son said the name, what Moshe said, and the guy fell on the floor dead. It's not the first one, it's not the last one. I know in our generation, people, people kill people with that, with that name. So it's not a secret. It's a, it's a dangerous tool. If the person is not up to it, the, the name can kill him. So the Torah tells us, continue the Torah, it's not important, but why the Torah tells us? So, so for the next, maybe the next episode, the Torah tells us, the next, the next day Moshe, Moshe comes outside and he sees that person was hit the day before, he's trying to hit his brother. The name is Datan Baviram. Trying to get that, hit him. He raises his hand at him. And Moshe said, Namada Kirecha, Namada Rasha. And says, the Gemara says, if you, if you just raise your hand to hit somebody, listen, if you just raise your hand, you don't even hit anybody, just raise it. You become Rasha, wicked. And that title expelled the person talking from a lot of things in the Jewish laws. Somebody takes a loan, doesn't pay back, it's called Rasha. Aspanim, somebody has too much pride. So Moshe tells the guy, why are you, why are you trying to hit you? Why are you hating? Why are you trying to hit you? So the person tells Moshe, who are you? That you obey over here, you're a judge or something. You are playing are you planning to kill me the way you killed yesterday the Egyptian? And Torah says that Moshe said the statement. And you heard that he said, Achen no davar. Now I know. What do you know now? Moshe says, Moshe says, I know now why the Jewish people suffer so much. I know. Look what happened. As of that episode, Moshe had to run away. Moshe had to run away. First he runs to a country called Kush, maybe Ethiopia. And then he, he left Kush. And he's going to Midian. <coughs> they expelled him from Kush. He didn't want to marry this, this the queen over there. But stayed over there. He goes to Midian, he goes to the well. He goes to the well, he sees uh, seven girls over there. That the shepherds give them a hard time. They threw them as a joke into the well. Moshe goes and helps them. And not only that, he helps, he helps them with the sheep. And he gave water to the sheep. And the girls come, the girls come home. And uh, tell Itro, Shalom. Itro says, well, how did you come so early? I said, well, 
It's an Egyptian person who came over there, we don't know who it is. He helped us very nicely, he saved us, and he, and he gave water to our sheep. So he told said, go quickly, go back to the well, get him, maybe he's going to marry one of you. Such a good heart person, you need to get married to somebody with, with a good heart. That's how Benio Nisim said in his book, he uh, said, when you, go for, when you go on a date, you have to look for one thing. Does the person have a good heart or not? That's it. Nothing else. So Moshe comes home to Ito's house. He, he walks inside the door. Ito looks at him and he says, Ah, <coughs> I know you. You killed about 50 years ago, about an, an, official, an, an Egyptian official. He grabbed him, much stronger than Moshe, and maybe had some people helping him. They locked Moshe behind iron bars. Out of nothing. Moshe didn't do nothing. Ten years, the Gemara says, Tzipora, it was daughter, is to serve Moshe breakfast, lunch, and supper. After ten years, all of a sudden, she went to her father and she asked it, well, where is this guy, that the Egyptian that you locked him over there? So it was in the back. He also said, well, that ten years ago, he's dead. Surprisingly, he didn't know, of course, that Tzipora gave him food. It all goes over there, open the gate, and it doesn't matter what happened. Yeah. Moshe started to work for him. That worked for him, Moshe always said it all. So Moshe was a, a, a shepherd for him. And one day the Gemara says, one of the sheep ran. Moshe ran after him, chased him, and uh, the sheep got to a little river. And was drinking, and Moshe said, "Oh, you were you were so thirsty. I'm so sorry." And after he drank, Moshe took him on his shoulder, and then Hashem came over to Moshe and said, "Moshe, you're going to be the redeemer. Since you were such a good heart and everything, perfect. Okay. So I was why I was in jail for ten years. I'm such a good heart." So Hashem said, "Moshe, okay, Moshe, listen." I see my, my people, I mean Israel, they suffer so much in Egypt. They're screaming. I'm going to take them, bring them to Earth Israel. You are the one. But she said, I don't know why I'm the one, and I don't know what the hope they have to be redeemed. You? A merciful person that you went and helped your brothers, you saw how, how much they suffer. Then you helped random girls over there. You're going to, to, to tell Kadosh Baruch Hu what zechut, what, what privilege they have, what the merit they have. The opposite. Excuse me. Hashem just told you. Hashem just told you. They suffer so much, and I heard the screaming. How much they suffer. I want you to go. I said, what is good they have? Why, why I should redeem them? So what are you talking about, Moshe? And then Hashem said, you know what? I'll tell you. The first question you ask me, who am I? You write, you nothing. I'm going to help you. The second question you ask me, what is good they have? It means, I will take them to our Sinai, here in this place, and they can get the door of it. The Torah over here. Why do they get the Torah here? They can get the Torah in Egypt. Moshe didn't ask it. But I don't know why he didn't ask it. But if Hashem said the purpose of coming out of Egypt is to get the Torah, where's the Torah? When they come out of Egypt, they're going to come to this mountain. They don't have to come to this mountain. If Hashem wants to give us the Torah, Moshe could deliver it in Egypt. It's the same thing. The Torah was not given in Yerushalayim, it was given in the desert. What does it make? Can be given in Egypt. By the way, Egypt is greater than, than House Sinai. Because the Torah describes Egypt as Ganeden. In the Torah it says, Kigan, Shem Kiaretz Mitzrayim. So, what, so what, what is the necessity to go down to House Sinai? Stay wherever you are, Shem. And what it, does it mean? The Zuchut is to get out of Egypt, it's just to get the Torah. Hashem just said, if they get them out because they suffer so much. So, Hashem should have said to him, this is what I send you. You telling me and you asking me why I'm taking them? 
Take it because I just told you I can't take it. I can't say I can't take this suffering and screaming so much. She said, no, Torah, Torah, Torah. So are you going, Moshe? said, no, I'm not going. She said, why are you not going? I said, well, every day for seven days is another excuse. I'm not qualified. I stutter. I don't talk so much. By the way, he said also, you know, they will not believe what name I have to tell them, what did, what did Hashem say exactly, who is Hashem exactly, and I tell them, I met Hashem, they say no. Hashem said, no, why are you saying the Hashem about them? So, Hashem said, okay, listen, you are like the snake. Snake said Hashem about me to Adam Lechava, to Chava, you also say snake, you also say Hashem Why are you saying you don't believe? Say, what happened to you, Moshe, what happened to you? The argument, Hashem writes it in the Torah. Seven days, arguing with Hashem. But even the Gemara says, the date that Hashem spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu was the first day of Pesach, the day before Pesach. If Moshe would have agreed right, agreed right away, Am Yisrael would have gone out of Egypt immediately. Because Moshe argued with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, he delayed Am Yisrael coming out of Egypt with another year. Because the Gemara says, Mashiach may come any day, Amen. Amen. But coming out of exile to go to Eretz Israel only the night of Pesach. Let's, let's um, you hear the Shabbat today. You can, go, you can go to Eretz Israel, but it's not going to be an exodus. Everybody, all the Jews from all the world come to Israel. No, not yet. No, you're going to come Pesach. That's the Gemara. It's called Lel Shimon. <coughs> okay. Moshe, by arguing with the Kadosh Baruch for seven days, delayed redemption. Hashem asked him, are you going? He said, I'm not going. Hashem tells Hashem, shlach na bet shlach. Said anybody, I'm not going. So I says, Hashem was very angry at Moshe. He says, you know what? I had in mind you should be a coin, your brother and Levi. Now, your brother is going to be a coin, you're going to be a Levi. He says, excuse me, what this has to do with me going on a coin? I don't understand. What's the switch? Finish. Now Hashem said, go. Not only that, Hashem said to Moshe, if you're not going, no one else will take them out. And even that, he didn't want to go. How can it be this? This is not Moshe Rabbein. Moshe Rabbein is this. Okay. <coughs> Hashem so-called so forced him. In the text, where we're going to read this, Hashem Shem Shabbat. He's going. He's going, he goes home. Says the Torah, the episode, what happened? It's a machloka between the Gemara and the Matam and Uziel, but the, the, the Gemara says like this Moshe already had one child, and the disaster for the first child. Israel told him, Listen, you're going to marry my daughter Zipporah? One condition. The condition is the first boy, he'll I'll give him a free choice. If he wants to be a priest, let him, have, let him, have, let him be a priest. And Moshe said, okay. And actually, not his son, but Moshe's grandson was like, like a semi-priest. Semi-priest. Moshe, why did you agree to such a condition? There's not a girl in the world. The Yitro was a priest. He wants his grandson to be a priest. Moshe, I don't understand you. He said, no, no, thank you very much. I'm not marrying your daughter. Marry your daughter. Moshe is almost 80 years old. Whatever he is, 75, maybe. About. I said, no, sorry. I'm not marrying your sister. You invited me to home because you wanted to marry one of your girls. You can make, give, me, give me a condition you should be a priest. No priest, no. You know I'm Jewish. Moshe agreed. Everybody asked, what is this with Moshe Rabbeinu? How did you agree such a thing? Such a condition. And he had the second baby. Called him Eliezer. Says the Gemara, Hashem told Moshe, go to Egypt. And Eliezer was just born. And the Allah is, when the baby is born, the first, if you do Brit Milah, you cannot just walk in the desert with the baby. He might die. 
So we have to wait. So the time to do Brit Milah for Eliezer. And Moshe decided he is not going to Egypt yet. He's going to wait a little bit. And he is not going to do the Brit right now in, in Mito's house. Because then he won't be able to live. And Hashem told him, listen, you got to, you got to leave. You're going to meet Aaron on the way. So they took the donkey. And the Gemara says he had the donkey of Mashiach with him. That's how great Moshe was. Moshe is the same donkey that Aaron Vino had like Elach Yitzchak. It's a donkey that Mashiach will ride if we don't behave. If we behave, Mashiach will, will come on the cloud, not on the donkey. People say Mashiach comes with a donkey. Comes on a donkey, it's embarrassment. It's embarrassment for us. We don't need the donkey of Mashiach. But if we're not on the, on the right level, he comes on the donkey. So Moshe has this donkey. Goes, he comes to the hotel. And he has to, he has to put Milan in the hotel. That's what he decided. I don't know exactly the calculation. But then the Gemara says, he comes to the hotel, he goes to the receptionist, and he says, the Gemara says, he says, uh, can I see the room? You have rooms over here. And the receptionist says, yeah, yeah, we have rooms. So Moshe says, can I go see the room? All of a sudden, a snake comes. A snake comes, he's about to kill Moshe. Torah so said, Sipora, his wife, took a stone, excuse me, Give it to the baby Eliezer, because Shmuel Israel Eliezer. The snake left. Torah is so in the Torah. Says the Gemara, what's the problem? What did Moshe do? Moshe says, well, Moshe should not have asked the receptionist, where is the room? He should have, should have entered the receptionist place, the receptionist place, and should, should ask, can I go to the corner over here? I have to do something for my child. So what happened? Instead, to do it right away, he asked, where's my room? Can I see the room? For this, says the Gemara, a snake came. We almost lost Moshe Rabbeinu. Can you imagine? Lost Moshe Rabbeinu because, says the Gemara, he delayed the Brit Milah in a few minutes. Not a few minutes. Why did you ask about the room? Does it seem to ask about the room? I want to see if it, uh, the room is good. I don't know. What's wrong with this? So the Brit Milah in five minutes. What's the problem? In the Torah, in the text, it says, If I didn't have him alone, I wish Hashem, Hashem met him, so called an angel, Hashem, Vakesha Mitoa almost got killed. If Zephora would not have, take, have taken the stone and do between her right away to the baby, Moshe would be dead. Snake would, would, would kill him. So, what's wrong? What, what happened? What happened? What happened to this guy, Moshe? Okay. And if you read the text, Hashem says, Moshe, okay, now, now I want to tell you something. You go to Paro, and Hashem tells him certain things to say to Paro. Say, say to Paro, to you. Moshe goes to Paro. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say the words Hashem told him to say. He added, added certain words Hashem never told him to say. Maybe that's why Paro did not listen. Because there's a certain energy in the words that Hashem said to Moshe, say those words. He doesn't say those words. He doesn't say that. He comes to power, and then power says, I don't believe it, and uh, I'm not going to send them out. Of course, Hashem already told Moshe that power will not believe. But still, but still, that's because Hashem maybe had known that Moshe will not say the so called the magic words. This is a Again, the Zohar says, Chas shalom to think Hashem writes a story about Moshe in the dialogue with Hashem. <coughs> but still, Hashem wants from us something. We read this book, it's called the Book of Redemption. And the Mishnah, the Gemara says, wait, it's not 100% that Moshe will come and go straight to Israel. We might go to the desert. Like our fathers left Egypt and to the desert. Four tears in the desert. So the Mishnah says to Gemara, wait, if you're not eligible or entitled to go to Israel, Moshe is going to come. Moshe, Moshe, Moshe was a Mashiach also. And he came and said, we're leaving. And at the end, what happened? From the 600,000 men between age 20 and 60, 
only two categories of Israel. Says the Gemara, don't be surprised if Has Shalom can happen to you the same thing. Mashiach will come, collect all of Israel. It says the ratio is from every 600,000 Jews, only two will get at the end of Israel. Gemara, Mashiach come, Mashiach come, we're going, you can pack up your bags, you go to the desert first. I said, what is it all about? What's the story? Well, this is the direction. The instruction that this, this week's parasha and many in next week's parasha is instruction and guidance how we can save ourselves by being in the desert. And Ikam Chachamim tells a story like this. The story goes like this. Shlom Mamech wrote few books. Shle, Kohelet, Shira Shiri, few books he wrote. Ma says either he wrote it when he was very young, before he got married to the Shikze, the daughter of Pharaoh, or just before he died. When he did Yeshua, what he did. But the whole thing is secrets. Those three books are secrets. And the sentences is very hard to understand. And one of the sentences, instead of where it is, says that I want to tell you a secret. Somebody can be very smart and very high level in behavior, perfect person. And all of a sudden you see disaster. When it escalated down, Nothing will happen. Shlomo said, you know why? Uh, nothing, he, didn't anything, he didn't do anything wrong. What happened was, somebody came over to him and told him something. And he could not control himself. And he's gonna lose himself. And he's gonna miss and lose his stage. And he's finished. It's not his fault. He did nothing wrong. He just couldn't control himself. And that person that triggered it, ignited him, made him upset or told him something, told him something he doesn't like, he did it for him and finished. He said, What's all? What happened? Why? Why? What happened? The guy's innocent. What happened? I just come and says, What is the message? So we care about comes and tells us a, a message as usual. The last chapter, the last Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, in the first chapter, reads: "Shlav v'rim ha'olam ha'med al emet v'al adin v'al al shalom." Adin emet v'shalom. The three pillars holding the world: din, the laws, the truth, emet and shalom. And a person that was made in the form of Hakadosh Baruch Hu has the right to exist if he will try all his life, all his life, to achieve it. So he looks at himself in the mirror and look at your face to see, am I uh, the one that uh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu meant that he created me, that I keep those things? You have tests all your life. Eov and his friends said, "Emil Doshav lo yamin, malachav yaves, malachav yasim to halan." I don't remember the sentence. Emil Doshav lo yamin. Hashem doesn't even trust an angel. People, Emil Doshav lo yamin, malachav yasim to halan. With his angels, Hashem does not believe the angels. And the Zohar says. And angels sometimes rebelled against the Kadosh Baruch Hu. The Zohar, the Zohar says, the Satan, what we call Malach Hamavet Yetzirah, he rebelled against the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem made him just the head of Chavar Kadisha. He does what he wants. Ein Mikdoshav lo yamin. The Malachav yasim to Allah. Tzadik, until he closes his eyes, Hashem said, I don't trust him. Why? 
the colony is going to have so many tests until the last moment of his life, he might lose everything. Says the Mishnah, you should know, the three things, the three pillars that hold the world is Din, Emet, and Shalom. And Hashem is testing the people. Look, Adam HaRashon failed in his test. Hashem told him, don't eat from the tree. From the tree, there's no more din, no more, no more laws. Then, he stole from the tree. He stole from the tree. Hashem said to the angels, this person that li- lays on the floor, you see soon he's going to be a thief. Shalom. Hashem asked him, did you eat from the tree? He said, my wife. It means destroy the shalom bite. Then he separated from his wife 130 years. Missed it. Comes a Kadosh Baruch Hu, the descendants of Adam Rishon will try to fix those three things. Come to Mabul, they try. Malalas Hamas Mipneim, don't keep the laws, it's stealing. Ashkit Kol Basar. Did not emit. Finished. Next generation, the people that wanted to build the tower, they want to fight with the Kadosh Bahu, and no peace. Came those down the third generation. They don't do, they don't keep the laws. And then and 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 did not emit. Comes Ari Abin Bahai say, you should know the Jewish people in Egypt are the same neshamot of the generation in the Mabul, the generation they built the tower, the generation that did this dome. Hashem is trying to see if you can fix what the Dhamma is only one, him and his one. People in Egypt still don't do anything. Hashem said, okay, Moshe, Moshe equal to all of Israel, now I want you. I want you to see, maybe you will be the one to fix the thing of Adam Rishon to fix the three pillars. The world shakes. And it comes the Gemara, and then comes the, 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 the Kohelet Shlomo, and says like this. Introducing Moshe Rabbeinu, the best ever. The prince, he comes down the first day, out of the palace, he sees the Jewish people working so hard, bleeding, he's gonna help them. He sees an Egyptian official kills the Jew, he kills him. <coughs> So much mercy. Goes down the second day. He sees two Jewish people fighting. He tells one of them, "Why? Why are you hitting? Why are you hitting your friend?" The guy tells him, "Mi sam chaliish, sam shvet aleinu." So you judge? Tells the man is, "Yes, Moshe is a judge." You will see later when Moshe is going to go to Arsina. He's going to come back. He's sitting to judge the people because the pillar of the world, of deen, of judge, of trial, is very important. That's Moshe is going to sit, and Vito will tell him, you sit by yourself, you judge the people, Moshe says, yeah, yeah, I have to judge everybody. The world stands up. But that person, so-called, screams at Moshe Rabbeinu, and instead of Moshe Rabbeinu put his head all the way down and not say nothing, what he said, a statement, achen now I know why the Jewish people suffer so much. See? That's the problem in life. Hashem loves the people that don't answer. Ketzet Hashem Shibuato. Ani lavim v'nam olvim. Somebody insulted you. You did not insult him back. Shamim chrapatam v'nam yeshivim. Don't even say anything to him. Why did you insult me? Don't say. Kavim Avas Mechim, he said, thank you, friend. I appreciate very much that you insulted me. Don't hurt him. Think of it. Thank God he insulted me. Alema Ketub Omer, Hashem said, I love you. Ketzet Hashem Shukvato, you like the sun. The sun in Shammai. I said, Moshe Rabbeinu, those two screamed at him. Older than him. The one of them screams at him and says, Who are you? Moshe instead, just to walk away, he said, Achen no dadava. Now I know why Am Israel suffer. The 
prosecute on Israel because Hashem heard it in Shammai. But the punishment is going to be immediately. Moshe is going to have to run. Pesach is going to be 40 years in, in Kush. It's because you could have controlled yourself. I says Hashem is testing you with, it's called peace. Peace. The world stands on peace. And if you answer somebody, it means you destroy peace. Zemar is shown by saying, my wife gave it to me, destroy the peace, the shalom bay, between him and Chava. I said, do you have that surviving your life? You are being tested all the time for the three pillars that the Zemar was not able to hold. And he comes to continue, the continues. Oshie comes to the well. He comes to the well and he sees the seven girls being tortured by the shepherds over there. They don't let them um, give water to the sheep. And they threw them into the well. And Moshe goes and by Yoshion, he helps them. Fine. The girls come home and they tell it all well. We're here. It was how come you came so early? So they said, excuse me. It was an Egyptian person. Even though he came from Kush, Papa Abbe spoke Arabic. So he told us, get him. He'll be such a generous, such a kind person. Maybe he can marry you. He has a good heart. He comes. He told us, him, hello. Yes. So Moshe said to him, Ahalan, Sahalan. He told us, excuse me? I thought you were Jewish. Why are you talking to me Arabic? The Gemara says, I'm Israel will be deemed out of Egypt because they didn't speak Arabic in Egypt. You try to hide your identity. Moshe Lohoda Be'at, so says the Gemara. Now, version of the Gemara says, Moshe's bones will not go to Israel. Yosef Hoda Be'at, so. Yosef told the butler, tell Paro, the Jewish guy in jail didn't do anything. The Gemara says, Yosef, why do you tell him a Jewish guy? Tell him somebody, you know, from China. He's in jail. He said, no, no, no. So one says, Yosef admitted he's a Jew. Moshe came to Ito's house. The girl said, an Egyptian. Moshe should have gone into the house. And says, hello, shalom aleichem. My name is Moshe. I believe his name is Monium, not Moshe. Moshe is translation of, his, of, of, of the Egyptian name, but it means getting out somebody out of other water, Monium. So instead, Moshe is trying to hide his entity, this is Jew. For this, Ito grabbed him, put him 10 years in jail. Secret for 10 years. Because he is Levi, he's involved with Yosef. What did I do? What did I do? Didn't you call me to, to marry one of your sisters or your daughters? What happened? Put me in jail. What did I do? Punishment of Hashem. It's called Emmet. The world stands <coughs> on the pillar. It's called Emmet. You can imagine Yaakov. If you ask Shalom, don't say 100%. Moshe, your job on this world is to correct the three pillars. So far, you made a big mistake with the peace. You said, Hashem, I don't understand these people. The better they suffer. Huh? So called, you're fighting with, with the people. Now, the second pillar, you're hiding under, under, under an Egyptian mask. What happened? Finished it. Okay comes out of jail after 10 years, he's going, he's going to go, he's going to work for Itro. Work for Itro. He's going to marry his, his daughter. Itro tells him, listen, you're going to marry my daughter, the first son, Abu Dazara. Whatever it means. You understood, you understand, doesn't matter right now. What do you agree with that? What do you agree with that? My son should be Oshima. Why do you agree with his head? Your head is hesitant. That's a problem. Your problem in life is that somebody made you upset or somebody told you something you didn't like and you did not put your head down. Now your head doesn't work well. No? He is marrying the girl on the condition. The first one. Maybe not with Mila. It's a whole question. If he had with Mila, Gershom didn't have with Mila, he will do with Mila later. Moshe, what do you agree? 
יש להם את הזמן חג שנה חג שנה. שלום עושה את זה. לוק את ספר קהלת, שפטר סבן, סנטר סבן. הגמרא עושה את זה, זה לא רק שזה חד. הגמרא עושה את זה, זה חד. זה לא חד. משהו קורה בחד של אדם, ואתה לא יכול לקרוא את זה. זה דמג' על הסיסטם. דמג' על הסיסטם. ושלמה המלך פוטי את זה אפיזוד הזה, זה אנחנו נראה את זה בסדר. אבל זה כבר בסדר. משה רבינו היה 12 או 20, כשזה קרה בפרסט אפיזוד. ואני אגיד, And he's going to be a shepherd, and he's, he's going to see one of the sheep run, run, and, and Moshe is going to chase him, and he's going to go to a, a, a little river, he's going to drink, and Moshe has so much mercy on him, he's going to put him on the shoulder, and Hashem will come to Moshe, to Moshe, I'm God, and you Hashem, so listen, you are the Goel, you're the Redeemer, and Moshe said, well, who am I? And what a privilege Am Israel have that I've taken them out. Excuse me, Moshe, what did he say? In the statement, Hashem tells him, Shemati Tzakab Me Israel, I heard the screaming. I saw what the, Mitzvah, what the Egyptians do to, to them. Go, take them out. Moshe said, what zechut they have. What do you mean what zechut they have? What's your business? Why are you asking them all these things? And you become a prosecutor again. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Moshe, are you going? I'm not going. Moshe, can you go? No. They won't believe in me. They won't believe what I saw. They won't believe. Hashem screams at him, says, what? Hashem told Moshe, they don't believe. You don't believe. As soon as I saw you, you don't believe in me. I'll tell you to, hit a, to speak to a rock, you're going to hit a rock. So why do you say, Hashem told Moshe, what happened to you? What happened? What happened? What happened? So I said, nothing happened. Something said something to you, and you could not control your mouth, and you could not put your head down. Who are the two people? That time I have here, okay. The all continues and said, okay. Hashem said, Moshe, no, Moshe, you going? He said, no, I'm not going. Send whatever you want. Shlach, my bet, shlach. He said, you know what? I thought you were going to be a Kohen. Now you're going to be a Levi. Your brother's going to be a coin. I said, what, what, what's the message? So the Aaron is the of Shalom, the of Shalom. Aaron was the pillar of Shalom. Aaron is zero jealousy. Hashem says, Moshe Rabbeinu, don't worry about your brother by taking this job. He's going to be happy in his heart that you got, even though he's older than you, and he was a student Navi in Egypt. I love this guy. Oyev Shalom, Oyev Shalom. He chases peace. Pillar of peace is not, it does mean that you don't fight. I mean, you try to make peace between people. But if you fight, you destroy the pillar. Moshe, look. He said, I don't know about my children. Look, you argue with me. I said, show me more map. What happened? Okay, you cannot be a coin. Okay. Moshe goes back to Israel. He's going to Egypt. He's going to Egypt. I said, he didn't do bet milah. According to the Gemara, to Eliezer, he comes to the hotel. Instead, to make Brit Mila right away when he comes in, he asked the receptionist downstairs, says, where is the room? Which room am I taking? A snake arrived. What happened? What, what did they do? Nothing. They didn't do nothing. But you have to understand the pillar of Emet and the pillar of Shalom is Brit Mila. That's the Shabbat. The pillar of Emet, Ali says, Emet is holiness. Emet is your mouth. Emet is your Brit Milah. Shalom. Well, it be Shalom. Hashem says, Moshe, go to Pinchas. El Briti Shalom. Eliyahu Malach Abrit. I say, Shalom. I say, what's Shalom? The pillar of Shalom starts from your Gdusha, from your, from your Tahara, from your purity, from your holiness. The whole purity and holiness of your mouth. I says, Moshe, you can delay Brit Milah in one second. When my uncle is coming from China, I'm going to do it in the afternoon. They don't understand. Moshe was almost killed because of five minutes delivery with Mila. It has sick by Malon Tchila. There is no excuse you have to do it with Mila as early as possible because it shows that you worry about the pillar of Emet and the pillar of Shalom. 
תהיה בר שלום, זה גמר הזה, זה רוב סטורי בעד איס פרסון, תהיה בר שלום. זה הסיקרט של ברית מילה. קוקיניה זה תורה, אוקיי? כמו שהשם יזכיר את אלי מסטייפי מוטי תל פרו, אלוקי העברים נקרא עלינו, גוטה פרולס, אז גם גוטה פרו, מסטייפי זה עבריים, זה עבריים, זה נקרא ב-A, זה נקרא ב-A, זה עד, זה נפגענו, בדבר או בדבר או בחרב, השם יזכיר את אלי, 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 Moshe is going to come to Paro, he's going to ask Paro to release us. Paro said, you know what? Not only I don't release you, I will not give you straw to make bricks. And I'm Israel, we were hit, the, the policemen, the Jewish policemen were hit, and Moshe comes out of Paro's palace and discussing with him, and those two people, that and Gavir, I'm standing. Those the two ones, the ones that caused Moshe to run away, to be in Kuz for 40 years, and then 10 years in jail. Baruch Hashem, now Moshe Rabbeinu is 8 years old. This is why the Torah tells us how old Moshe is now. Who cares how old Moshe is? Moshe says, listen, he's coming up to Egypt, he's 8 years old. Where were you the whole time, Moshe? Well, I had to run away for Paro. I had to run, then I went to Pietro to get married, and he put me 10 years in jail. Now I'm 80, now I'm here. That's the secret, the Torah tells you how old Moshe is. So Moshe comes to Hashem and says, listen, why did you send me? Since you sent me things that was. Hashem says, listen, now you see. You're not going to see what happened in Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is the place of peace, the place of din, the place of judgment, the place of emet. Torah is emet. Hashem says, Moshe, look, they come out of Egypt and they get Torah here. I says, why are they going to get Torah here? I don't understand. Why can't you give them Torah in Egypt? You know why? The Gemara says, I'll tell you why. Because until Hasim and I, we were not united. There was no peace. Eventually, you're going to come Amalek. Eventually, you're going to get to a stage that you're going to penetrate inside your heart. And everybody's going to be friendly with everybody. You have peace. Everybody is together. Ah, then you can get a Torah. Because the Torah contains all the three pillars. Torah is Torah Emet. Torah is Din. And Torah is Shalom. כל בנייך מודה השם, ורב שלום בנייך. רבשי wrote this sentence in four גמרות to tell you you are the son of God only if you learn Torah because by that you are holding the world. If you're holding the world means the three pillars are standing. But if you don't have the three pillars, the world is going to fall apart. The big man says, before Hashem gave the Torah, earth was shaking. Hashem is going to destroy the world. Hashem is going to destroy the world because the pillars are not there. In order for the world to stand, you have to learn Torah. You have to have in mind, the Torah would change me, says the Rambam and the Rambam, in order for me to be a role model of Hashem's form. And Hashem wants me only to have those three pillars. And you should know in your lifetime, there are people going to come to you, going to talk to you, going to tell you, and it's going to say, say certain things to you, but you're not going to put your head down, you're not going to say, and you're not going to accept it with love, You're going to say something, you think something, say Shalom HaMelech, you lose your heart. You lose your entity. You become a failure, you miss the position, you miss what Hashem said. Before Moshe started his mission already, Hashem told him, you're not going to go to Israel. So I didn't start it yet. I didn't take them out of Egypt. Artatire, finish. What did I do? He spoke to me. So what? You don't understand. Because you did not. But the punchline is Parashat Korach. Parashat Korach, Torah tells you, Korach started the hue against Moshe Rabbeinu, Machloket, Vedatan v'aviram b'nei Eliyah b'nei Ruven. It says those two, Meshugnes, those two that caused Moshe Rabbeinu to be in jail for 10 years, to be a way king in Kush for 40 years, lost so called what he should have had, that Shlom HaMelech said, of course. They make machloket with Moshe. Says the Torah, as Moshe sends somebody to them, says, please, please, don't do machloket. What are you talking to them? Moshe Rabbeinu, don't you know the name that you killed the Egyptian? Have them, have that name in front of them. Machloket, machloket, machloket. They're going to die in a minute, in a minute, in a minute they're going to die. The ground will open up and swallow them. 
Amosha Rabbeinu, now he learned the peace, he has to run after peace. Those ones that you are, they are your enemies. They caused you to suffer so much in your life. This man put me in jail for 10 years. This man put me in, in, in Kush 40 years. Love my family, nothing. And what happened to me? Look what happened to me. I said, no, no, no. Keep no grudge, no hatred in your heart. That's how you fix your heart. As I said, I saw Salante was one on the train. And somebody bothered him, bothered him, but then they went off the train. He saw the people came and with Absalom said, Who are you? He says, You didn't do nothing for me. Why are you here for? He says, Well, my son in law, Absalom said, I can take care of everything for you. Just tell me what you need, I do for you. We can't have anything in your heart. That's really the Parsha Mishpatim, Moshe came out down from Mount Sinai. Elam Mishpatim, this parasha contains, the Gemara says, all those pillars, the honesty. To be honest in your life, <coughs> to have peace with everybody, be your enemy. <laughs> Get out everything out of your heart. Somebody that you don't like, nothing, you don't like somebody, nothing. The pillar is shalom, you have to have peace with everybody, you can't have anything in your heart. You have to be a man. Amen. 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 Amen.